my parents were really at a loss of what to do with me, you know. I was getting worse, I wasn't getting any better, so my mom didn't want me to leave the house because the flu was bad that year. I hadn't gone outside in like all win the whole entire winter. I was locked up inside. She would get some groceries for me. I would try to cook if I could, but mostly my boyfriend would come on the weekends and cook all my meals that I needed basically during the week and then I could um, just go downstairs and eat and go right back upstairs. At this point I wasn't talking to my mom at all. She wouldn't talk to me and I wasn't talking to her. And yeah, I lived all winter that way. So eventually, like I was saying, my parents didn't know what to do with me. I was non-functional, you know, I was in bed for the whole day. Luckily I had my boyfriend on the weekends, but even, even then I was, you know, getting fairly agitated with him. My body was essentially just shutting down. I essentially got dragged to see this therapist um, after not leaving the house all winter. So you can imagine how that went in the car ride. It was a 20 minute drive. Um, I couldn't stand the vibration of the car. So I was getting these pseudo seizures. I'd have basically pseudo seizures every single day, surrounded by noise and the stimulus. All the way to see the therapist, I was just literally just bawling and crying and you know, my dad brought me and he was just so stressed about taking me, but he didn't know what else to do. And, you know, I could just tell the fear in him about what was going on. And, you know, like, like I said, my parents weren't able to express themselves emotionally. They're not. They don't express themselves and how they feel. So these stressful situations, that's obviously not handled very well um, because of the lack of basically have the ability to cope. You know, it's easier to not address the feelings and just go on and pretend everything's okay. Well, can't pretend everything's going okay when I'm in the state I'm in. So what happens is we get to the therapist's office. You know, I can't stand light of any kind, even natural light. So there's fluorescent light. Katy Perry was playing in the background. And all I saw were like, you know, um, these kind of like blur, it was like a blur vision of people talking and stuff like that. And I just run almost to the bathroom and just crash on the floor before I even made it in the bathroom and was just crying on the carpeted floor and, you know, made a huge scene. And essentially the therapist came, came over to me and said, oh, you know, let's get in the room, let's see what's going on. And basically we just spent that session trying to calm down. What happened from there was I built kind of this trust with the therapist I was seeing. And um, at the same time, I kind of figured out that I was suffering from vitamin A toxicity um, from eating too much chicken liver. So the, with the vitamin A toxicity, that was an easy fix because I just stopped eating chicken liver. So I did that and things with the sensory got a little bit better. I mean, it wasn't great. So at that point I was still kind of like mostly bed bound, um, having trouble breathing on exertion, still couldn't really form complete sentences that well or think that well. Um, I was still kind of in this fog where I just couldn't function, couldn't tolerate much. The fatigue was so heavy, you know couldn't, obviously couldn't detox like I am right now. I built this relationship with this therapist and um, she convinced me to actually leave my home because she said that I was suffering from sort of like a, it's called a conversion disorder. So it's basically when your body completely shuts down and you, you basically aren't living in the way you want to live and it's so severe your mind and body are connected that your mind just shuts your body down because it, it can't cope anymore it can't cope with the trauma it can't cope with the stress it doesn't know what else to do other than just completely shut down so essentially that's what was kind of going on with me at my home situation she kind of explained to me that the way I was living, I could no longer sustain and that I needed to live the way I wanted to live. 
and that was kind of the beginning of my recovery for me. Um, I moved in with my boyfriend about an hour away. I finally, for once, felt like I had control of my life and could kind of do what I wanted to do when I wanted to do it. Kind of like my body started to kick back up again. So like my temperature was always really low. My immune system was weak. I started getting all these fevers and my gut started moving a little bit better. And I started being able to go to the grocery store and just like slowly but slow, slowly but surely I started to like drive and do my own cooking. Just these little tiny improvements along the way I started to figure out who I wanted to be as a person and I started to figure out how I wanted to live which was like a slower lifestyle pace, um, more peaceful, being less obsessed about productivity and realizing that working and these standards I tried to help hold myself to caring so much about what other people thought of me that that was like my only concern that all that stuff didn't matter. Um, what mattered most to me that I was like a, a kind person, lived more of a peaceful lifestyle rather than the constant need for praise and success and validation. And, you know, I stopped needing this outside validation that I was getting all the time. You know, realized that, you know, my illness, it's not really anyone's fault. A lot of it had to do with mindset for me, but that allowed me to kind of get out of this victim role that I was in at the, at the home and, you know, make the best of the situation rather than catastrophize um, all my symptoms. Like, you know, it's the end of the world and I'm never going to get better. And it's like, you know, I listened to a podcast called The Minimalists and they obviously I could talk about minimalism, but one of the guys on there always says, you know, if if everything's a catastrophe and everything's such a big deal, then nothing's a big deal, nothing's a catastrophe. I started looking at my symptoms as more fluid and, you know, trying to be present in the moment. So when a symptom shows up and I get fairly sick, um, realizing that that will pass and it's not the end of the world and I'm going to make it through this because you know, when a, a bad symptom happens and you don't feel good, um, yeah, it sucks and it's a shitty situation, but it's really not the end of the world, like your brain's telling you. And if you do think it's the end of the world because you have, you know, a migraine or you have gut problems or you have, you know, neuropathy or whatever the case may be, or you have knee pain, you know, joint pain, like, if you catastrophize and say all that stuff is the end of the world and it's never going to get better, you know, that puts your body into a fight or flight mode, a stress mode, and then it makes the problem even worse. So if you are feeling shitty and just stay with the moment, stay with feeling crappy, just admit to yourself like, hey, I'm feeling crappy now and, you know, that's just the situation is not just sit with it. If you don't try to escape it and run from the negative feelings, then you actually can deal with the negative feelings. If you run from feeling sick all the time and, you know, all these symptoms you're having, then it just makes the problem worse because then you try to run from it and then you're like, oh my gosh, I'm still having these symptoms. Oh no. And then your body starts to get into this catastrophe state rather than like just being like, okay, like, okay, like, so I'm having problems today. I'm going to take it easy on myself. I'm not going to push myself. You know, I'm going to be resting most of the day. I'm dealing with these situations which are not easy to deal with and just recognize that what you're going through is a little bit difficult and being more easy on yourself rather than this negative self-talk where you just put yourself down more and more for not being able to do stuff and then you want to do more and you force yourself to do more and then it makes yourself sicker. You want to stay on the side where you're easy on yourself and you treat yourself like kind of like your best friend. And I really developed this lifestyle where I just, you know, stopped being so hard on myself. And inherently, I think where this, this mindset started for me was basically birth. 
<laughs> I grew up in a family who was extremely motivated and determined and that's not a bad thing, but I think they're, they really beat themselves up and they're really hard on themselves and they're their own worst critic and everything's all about how productive they can be and, you know, what other people think of them and it's, there, there's a time and place for that and my parents are amazing and I love them um, for them, but the lifestyle they live is not a lifestyle for me.